Today I want to do a fall makeup look because it is the end of September and we are entering the best makeup season. The colors, everything, it's great for wearing eyeshadow, great for wearing a dark lip. And I really want to focus on one of my favorite, favorite fall lipstick shades, which is the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Decade. It's like a, just like a super vampy, purpley type of shade. Purple brown. There you go. So on Lisa Eldridge's website, she says this is a divinely decadent burnt chocolate shade, which is lifted and made very wearable by its blue and lively red undertones. And it's inspired by hand tinted sepia fashion portraits. This isn't sponsored by the way, I just love this shade. Uh, so I feel like there's a tendency when doing a dark lip and there's nothing wrong with this by any means, it looks great, to do something like a, a winged liner, looks fantastic or maybe even like a very, very minimal fresh eye. Again, looks great, nothing against that at all. But I kind of want to play with like a fall makeup look that's like leaning into this vampiness on the eyes as well without feeling overwhelmingly like bold lip, bold eye. So I'm gonna show you how I do that because it's a, one of my favorite ways to do a dark lip. I'm mostly gonna be using the Melt 420 palette, which is Gorgeously, gorgeously fall, grungy. Uh, so yeah, I'm gonna delve right in. If anybody's curious, I already have done my foundation and my brows. I'm wearing Lisa Eldridge, shade seven in her foundation. This has been my go-to foundation all summer. I just find it doesn't wear too much. Like, I, like it doesn't get super like dewy because I think I use a pretty thick foundation so sometimes I struggle to get longevity from like the more like dewy radiant formulas but this one it's been it's been the ticket it's been what's working for me so yeah I'm gonna do blush eyes and then finish off with this lip shade so I want to start with blush because I feel so weird doing eyeshadow and everything without having like a flush to my complexion this is from LYS Beauty it's in the shade empower so I'm gonna start with a cream blush Again, kind of leaning into that little bit grungy, deeper tones. Don't be afraid of a deeper blush. If you have a fairer skin tone like me, you can really sheer it out if you want to, or just really lean into it because blush is the best. So, so vivid. And this brush is from Rare Beauty. I don't know what number it is, but it's for her soft pinch formula. I've been into like kind of dragging my blush down a little bit. I think it makes it look more natural. Not that that's what I'm aiming for, but there was this huge trend like last year to really like apply blush lifted and it just didn't work for me. It made my eyes look bruised. I think, I think as I have, if any of you tried that lifted blush trend and found it didn't work for you, like it's like my eyes are like hollowed here. So then when you put pigment on there, it's kind of just like sucking, sucking the face in and uh, I don't know. I'm more into the look that looks kind of uh, like you're from a painting, a pre-Raphaelite painting or something. I think that looks really pretty. I was planning to set this with a powder blush because that's what I do a lot lately. I do the cream, then the powder, so pretty, I'm like tempted not to, but at the same time, I think this shade goes a little bit more with the Velvet Decade. So this is Cur Royale from Laura Mercier, super deep. So I'm just gonna like pat that on top. A tip I learned from Julia Adams, if you have like a really highly pigmented powder blush, especially, and you don't wanna like put it on your face and get that patch, go into the, go into the pan. Boop, boop, boop go into your palm or like this, just like diffuse it a little. This probably isn't doing too much, but it's more for like setting, setting what I just did. I think I wanna do a highlighter as well. It says Rare Beauty Enlighten. This formula is packs a punch and a half. So again, I feel like I do this with so many products, but like go into the pan, and go onto the palm, the palm, the knuckle, whatever. 
and just really light. Kind of here, here. Can you see that? This can go a lot, a lot shinier. Um, I even take it from the palm when I just want a subtle highlight, the knuckle, whatever. And on the nose, I don't want too much there. I don't want to be like a gleaming glazed donut nose, you know. Perfection, so pretty. Okay, I'm happy with this. Something I did do off camera um, as well with the brows and the foundation was the Patrick Ta cream powder bronzer and she's statuesque. I just used the cream to sort of shape out if you're wondering why I'm not doing bronzer. So into the eyes, I'm gonna pair this, this grungy, grungy palette with the Hindash palette, which is something I turn to a lot because it has so many gradients. You can really pair it with any palette if you're looking for some lightness or some deepness. And the thought behind this eye to lean into having a grungy eye, but also not feeling overwhelmed with that big glam eye look and big glam lip is to keep the majority of the lid part pretty open and matte. So I'm gonna go in to this really, really light, light yellow. I'm just thinking for any skin tone, something that's a little bit lighter than your skin tone. Just kind of putting it here, middle of the eye. And I'll probably even go back into this to bring it forward again later, but middle of the eye, inner socket, brow bone, which I did just highlight the... This also helps set the eyelids if you got any foundation or concealer on it. I, a lot of the time I do prep my eyelids with concealer and powder, just so it's a nice blank canvas. Step one, leaning in to the grunge. I'm gonna go into the shade Dank. So it's kind of got a bit of green in it and I'm gonna lightly go in with a fluffier brush but it's 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 got some precision to it. Go into that, always tap off, just always. And start kind of putting that in the crease. Personally, because I have a quite defined nose bridge it's easy for a lot of shadow to form in this area. So if anybody does eyeshadow and sometimes find they don't like how deeper shades will just kind of like, or like a deeper look will draw your eyes together, try keeping this whole kind of zone a little brighter because some people can really pull off like working this kind of shade like well into the crease. I don't really do that. Maybe if there's something left over on the brush, I'll kind of like create a transition, but. Most of the pigment, I'm gonna focus it here. Then I have this really fluffy, but like coarse brush from Morphe. Oh, it's M433. I think I got it in some random kit and it's really great for doing this, kind of diffusing a shade like that much. So I've got this, I'm using the word grungy a lot but I will with fall makeup. This grungy crease shade going on. Uh, and then I wanna deepen sort of the edges of the eyelid with Hash, this shade. A little bit more neutral. And I'm just gonna go in with the same brush, which is from What's Up Beauty. It's the R102. What's Up Beauty makes fantastic brushes. They're a Pretty indie company, not many people know about them, I don't think, but nail polishes and eyeshadows. So anyway, it's on the on the lid now, but keeping it on the outside. Kind of transitioning it into that that same shade. Because this has a bit of the brown, brown that the lipstick is gonna have. Anyway, patting it in. So as you can see, I am continuing to blend these two shades, but the lid, the lid is what I'm keeping just bright and open. No eyeshadow there. Okay, with this same shade, Hash. I'm gonna go in with a bit more of a precise 
sort of flat brush. This is from KJH, Katie Jane Hughes, the Spectrum Collection, the 12 brush. Went into hash again and doing that, I forget what this technique is called, but they've been doing a lot in K Beauty, I believe, but where you kind of, you squint and see where your eye socket is and like emphasize the eye socket. But I'm gonna leave a bit of a gap. So it's like, I'm not close, again, like kind of keeping this openness to the eye as I add shading and shadow. This like the eye bag. And if you ever do this and you are like, it looks funny, wait until you do the lower lashes before deciding if it's not for you. Because when before you have like mascara on, it kind of looks like, I don't know, random eyeshadow under your eye. Then it kind of comes together. Not kind of, it does come together with mascara. Okay, so the deepest shade I'm gonna go into is the shade Roll It. This is something I'm gonna concentrate mostly along the lash line and I'll diffuse it a little bit. So it's kind of been three steps. We get transition shade into the crease, outer edges, the shade, and then really deepening it with this. The brush I'm gonna use, I don't know, here's a random dirty brush I think I used when I tried this look before. It's from Morphe. Again, sort of that flat shader brush. Again, tap, 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 especially if you already have your foundation on and you're using shades. Even if it's a light shade, just tap your brushes. I can't emphasize that enough. But apparently don't blow on them because then you're putting bacteria on it, so. So just working it into the lash line. And again, not really going in into this area. If you have wide, wider apart eyes than I do and you can pull that off, go for it. I'm sure it would look good, but again, to balance the lip, I'm just remembering to focus the product in very specific places. So along the lash line and then sort of up into that crease a little bit. Maybe even a little bit here. Just what's left on the brush. Just wiggling it into the lash line so there's no kind of gap. Gapping, gapping. Start bringing it out. Rotating the brush to bring it to the crease. Now that is the essence of the eye look. This is the point where I might go back into a couple shades that maybe I want to emphasize, like that um, medium brown, like to blend a little. I have a strange problem. I don't know if anyone else gets this, where pigment gets kind of weirdly stuck here and I have to really work on a blend just right there. I don't know what it is. Tell me if anybody else has that. And then again, like I said, kind of going back into that bright main shade just to re-emphasize. Okay, I'm gonna do my lashes. Something I think I'm also gonna do is some white. This liner is embarrassingly old. I'm slightly concerned about how often I use this in my waterline, because I've had this since grade seven, which was like over 15 years ago, I think. That's weird, but I guess if you sharpen it, where's the bacteria going? <laughs> I don't know. I seem to be doing okay so far, but um, sometimes I like to use this to kind of brighten up the inner corner and then go into the waterline. If anybody has any recommendations for waterproof waterline pencils, let me know. Eyeliners are kind of like sometimes insanely expensive and you don't want to spend money if you're not too sure if the formula is going to work out. But as great as this shade is and as creamy as this pencil is, it's, the longevity isn't great in the waterline. But yeah, it's from Annabelle from the drugstore from grade seven. But I put it in my waterline. So let's hope for the best. And then I'm also going to put some lashes on. These are not from MAC. I just store them in a MAC container. They're some chopped up lashes from this brand Kiss. I get them off Amazon. They're really cheap, but I really love them. I'm just going to put some mascara and a couple little lashes on the edges. And then I'll be back to finish it off with Velvet Decade. So here are the eyes with lashes. 
I'm pretty happy. I think you can see what I mean like by keeping it open, but then you have this grungy tone in the corner and on the edges. And again, sort of that small lash just like keeps things not lifted, but out, open. Um, so moment of truth, moment of dreams. This is the Lisa Eldridge Velvet Decade. And I had earlier on a lip oil, but I really scrubbed it off just to make sure the lips are as prepped as they can be. Generally trying to keep lips moisturized, exfoliated, definitely crucial for a, for a vampy dark lip. So here we go. Now, if this is my first application of the day with this kind of lip, I like to go in with a lip brush to really get to the edges. I don't have the matching lip liner. Also, I think it's important with a dark lip like this to really work it to the edges of your lip. Not like an overline exactly, but like bordering on one. I was once featured in some random article. Someone took my picture from Instagram of a really dark lip and used it. Why? Why you should never wear a dark lip and it makes your lips look smaller, which I disagree with. And also makeup is not always about looking I don't know, perfect or whatever. It's about making a vibe, channeling a vibe to feel cool and empowered. I feel like I can really see what Lisa Eldridge means with the hand tinted sepia portraits. Like this shade looks very vintage to me. And when you see it in person, there's a quality to it that I don't know, I can't describe. So, yeah, here's the finished look. Here's the finished look with the lips. I think it's perfect for an autumn day. Wear it with like a black turtleneck, some gold jewelry. I used to really hate how a dark lip, you kind of see the tone difference. But I don't know, whatever. Just keep your mouth shut and keep it pouty. I'm kidding. Don't keep your mouth shut, especially if you're a woman. Speak loud. Speak proud. Don't be afraid to go in with a little bit of a deeper blush and yeah, have some fun playing with the tones of fall or rock this with a winged liner. Like I said earlier, that would be fantastic as well. So yeah, I hope you learned something from this tutorial, got some inspo. If anybody recreates it, be sure to tag me on my Instagram, Evangeline Molly. I'm also on TikTok, Evangeline Molly. And this YouTube channel, uh, my own YouTube, YouTube channel is pretty new to me. So if you want to subscribe, that would mean a lot. I have a YouTube channel with my mom called Angels on Broomsticks. And we've been doing that for like three years. So we have a lot of fun over there with makeup. Sometimes we drink some cocktails and have some fun conversations while we do makeup. Definitely check that out too. That would mean a lot. And I think that's it for today. Stay witchy, stay bitchy, stay vampy. Have a good week. Bye, witches.